Good afternoon, everyone. Over the last several days, the American people have been both heartbroken and deeply concerned about the developments in Japan. We've seen an earthquake and tsunami render unimaginable, an unimaginable toll of death and destruction on one of our closest friends and allies in the world. And we've seen this powerful natural disaster cause even more catastrophe through its impact on nuclear reactors that bring peaceful energy to the people of Japan. Today I wanted to update the American people on what we know about the situation in Japan, what we're doing to support American citizens and the safety of our own nuclear energy, and how we are helping the Japanese people contain the damage, recover, and rebuild. First, we are bringing all available resources to bear to closely monitor the situation and to protect American citizens who may be in harm's way. Even as Japanese responders continue to do heroic work, we know that the damage to the nuclear reactors in Fukushima Daiichi plant uh, poses a substantial risk to people who are nearby. That is why yesterday we called for an evacuation of American citizens who are within 50 miles of the plant. This decision was based upon a careful scientific evaluation and the guidelines that we would use to keep our citizens safe here in the United States or anywhere in the world. Beyond this 50 mile radius, the risks do not currently call for an evacuation. But we do have a responsibility to take prudent and precautionary measures to educate those Americans who may be endangered by exposure to radiation if the situation deteriorates. That's why last night I authorized the voluntary departures of family members and dependents of U.S. officials working in northeastern Japan. All U.S. citizens in Japan should continue to carefully monitor the situation and follow the guidance of the U.S. and Japanese governments. And those who are seeking assistance should contact our embassy and consulates, which continue to be open and operational. Second, I know that many Americans are also worried about the potential risks to the United States. So I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the United States, whether it's the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the, uh, in the Pacific. Let me repeat that. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Wow. All I can say to that is wow, because looking back at everything and everything we know now, that's just, that's just gosh. And so no one should take precautionary measures, right? Wow. Well, the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. This is Patrick Fendry, Hattie, if you want to call me that. And uh, tonight, the good news is Alex Jones has done nothing today that would cause me not to read from the FOIA documents tonight. So great news. We're back to the FOIA documents. And real quick, before I do dig into that, I just posted up a couple links on the blog talk uh, post for tonight. And if you would be so kind as to go there, and this is a link to Jim Lee's website, um, Resonate. You may know him from YouTube, and I've also got his link to his YouTube channel as well. But on his website and on his YouTube channel, for that matter, the reason on his website, though, he's got a great compendium of information on climate modification. Uh, it's great. I mean, it's as good as chemtrails.net, as good as any of them, maybe better. There's so much there. I haven't had time to go through it all. But what an excellent database. And he is drawing the attention, maybe even the ire, of climatologists and climate engineers around the world from what I've been seeing. So, you know, you too can get involved and do this as well and actually make an impact and make a difference. So please do me a favor and check out his website and look into this climate modification program we're all suffering from. At the same time, if I could ask you, 
If you're interested in what's been going on with Alex Jones and you want to get caught up to date and hear everything and hear it from them, I'm just like Jones says, an obscure blogger. <clears throat> okay, now to tonight, the matter at hand. We're going to dig right into the screen captures, and I've got a link to that as well. And we're going to go right to the first screen capture where they talk about it not being a drill. And this is that Lucas Hickson pointed out in an early article that this is not a drill. They're letting people know that, you know, to prep and get ready in reference specifically to your conversation and what you're saying is what we surmise out of this. It's really the logical conclusion because they know about FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, and they know everything's being recorded, especially in these emergencies. But my understanding is NRC records all of their meetings and and all of these conversations and what have you. So they have quite a selection of transcripts and what have you. And if you sue for specific documents, you will get those. Although my understanding is if you know the master list, which we we uh, posted that up, you get to go in to look at all their documents from all sort of meetings all over the place, not necessarily having to do with Plumegate and or Fukushima. The first screen capture this is not a drill. Interesting to note, the Office of Public Affairs is expecting a large volume of calls from the media and the general public regarding the latest statements from the State Department and the NRC regarding the situation in Japan. All calls from media or the general public on this topic must be referred to Regional Public Affairs or the, and gives a number, I won't read it out, you don't need to be calling up, who knows, maybe it's a good number, I don't know. Number for HQ employees. And I did that too. I, I scrubbed some email addresses and stuff they had on certain documents. I could have put them in there, but I saw at the time, probably not cool. You know, this may still be good, and who knows what kind of weirdos are reading my stuff out there, like Ed Chiarini. It might be calling this number and don't need to be calling. It's probably a legitimate government number. So some of that I, I took out of there. I don't in any case, the second screen capture. This is not a drill. Again, they're being very clear about that. They want everybody to know that when this goes down, be careful. And from previous shows that I've done where I read some documents, you can see where it's very clear that some people are down with the plan, right, and they know to be very careful about what they say. And other people are new or maybe not so experienced to how it really works in the real world at some of these alphabet agencies and in the in the one back and forth between two guys, he, he's, he's trying not to say the worst case model for the children in California. And he says, I'm, I'm wondering if you have the, I'm looking for the, the I'm looking for a word to, for, to say what it is. And his buddy on the other line blurts out, you mean the, the worst case scenario to the thyroid to children in California? The guy's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like the Homer Simpson, no, you know, I shouldn't have done that. So there are very, some of them are careful to, to, to be part of the cover-up, and some others are maybe genuine and new and, and naive and maybe just finding out during Fukushima they got a real dose of reality within the fascist industries that we all have here in America. Now, the NRC and other federal agencies are continuing to follow an emergency occurring outside of the United States. Press releases about NRC actions are posted on www.nrc.gov. And there's a lot of things they say, if you're looking for any information, go to this government site, go to this government site. Again, very careful control of information. And you can see that a lot of places that gave independent information, like the NILU forecast that Dutch Sense posted up early on, which I thought was pretty magnanimous of him to go in and find that and, and post it up. As soon as that caught any kind of traction, somebody went in there, I don't know how, but they stopped doing it all of a sudden. But not before we screen captured some, but I thought that was interesting. Someone had the power enough across the world to pull some strings and get that little operation shut down. They went back to modeling SO4, sulfuric acid, and black carbon, and a couple other things that they do that come out of factories and what have you. So this, this screen capture is important to see how they're kind of, number one, it's not a drill. Number two, the information flow. Once you become familiar with these documents, you see they have all their special ways of controlling information. It doesn't go to the public, and we don't want to panic the public, not at all. And we don't want to rush and give the public bad information, not at all. But in Plumegate, the situation was simple. After Three Mile and after Chernobyl, well, there's no excuse. There's no, the FOIA documents aside, they know darn well what happens in the meltdown. In the story, hands down, it's not a, something to argue. And it's not really an opinion of mine. I'm just telling you, they all have these emissions and they go around the globe. This is known. This is known. Well, 
it's not known if you're being paid by the establishment or by GE or Bechtel. No, then you don't know about that stuff, right? It's most difficult get, to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not knowing it. That's Upton Sinclair said that. He wrote The Jungle about the meatpacking industry. It's no different. All these industries, and look, since he wrote that back in the 60s or early 70s, if I'm not mistaken, things have only gotten worse. They've only ramped things up. The next screen capture says the source term used from rascal, and they, they do the modeling, was questioned by the White House. The PMT, Protective Measures Team, has reevaluated and determined that rascal results are accurate based on scenario assumptions. The question involved why Unit 3 projections are low, which we are verifying that a 24-hour holdup delay assumption. Not the best grammar and uh, sentencing in some of this stuff. Current forecast meteorological data appears to indicate that winds are primarily from the west, headed offshore in parentheses, and should generally continue offshore through Wednesday, March 30, 2011. Again, there's indication that the wind is blowing offshore. I've got plume maps, and I've posted these up that are pretty, pretty damning. I mean, it's pretty clear they knew a plume was headed this direction, and DHS and FEMA, but they didn't do anything. FEMA was, was it DHS? DHS told FEMA to stand down, or one of, in the one David Liu um, uh, email, it's clear one of those two, I can't remember which at the moment, is told to stand down. They're not worried about the plume. This plume's going to impact on certain day. You know, people are standing down. It's called a stand-down order. Actually, it's similar to what happened on 9-11 when they say Dick Cheney held up the F-16 from launching to take down the uh, commercial aircraft that were hijacked. That's called a stand-down. He said, no, hold them on the runway. He said, sir, we want to launch. We're ready to take off. We're ready to scramble right now. Ready to scramble Zulu. Go, go, go. Dick Cheney's like, hold up there, buddy. Hold everything. Hold up. So that's a stand down. That's essentially, and it's comments, but it's a common tactic. You got your false flag. You got your stand down. So this is interesting that Rascal is questioned by the White House. Again, this is total control, total control. Do I have a link to Obama that says Obama said this, Obama said that, Obama knew this, Obama knew that? No, I don't have that. And I'm telling you, this guy's slick. He's not going to leave any trail. I found Hillary Clinton in here. She got the a sit rep report, a situation report. Now, what exactly is in that? I wish I could get my hands on that. If I do ever get my hands on that, well, I know what Hillary Clinton knew at a certain time when she was with Ambassador Ruz over in Japan. See, that's what's all wonderful and beautiful about this freedom of information, these documents. You, too, can go in here and find these yourself just randomly clicking through. There's just mountains of jewels and gems in there if you want to dig through. Be like a little gnome and dig for these gems and get in there and help us out. Next screen capture. In case you didn't see it, this is an email from Dorfline Lawrence. I'm not saying that right. To a number of people. NRC status update is what it says. In case you didn't see it, this was attached in the daily event summary. It is the best compilation of info I've seen to date. Note the OUO classification. Official use only. I've never heard of OUO, but now I know what it means, and this reminds me that I just posted up a on Uncovering Plumegate, which is a WordPress blog. I just posted up a acronyms and definitions. If you guys need help when you're going through these documents, I'm going to continue to populate that as I come across uh, certain things I don't know. I'll, I'll put a definition in there or, or get, tell you what the acronym is so you can understand, and some of these are contained in little screen captures throughout the documents. It's patently untrue when NRC at a meeting I saw the lady say to the audience, there's no need for housewives to worry about going through all these FOIA documents because there's a lot of technical terms in there and it's very difficult to understand and there's no definitions in there, she says. Well, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong and she knows it. She knows it. I don't remember who the lady was. This was a Miss Milky the Clown video I watched a while back. And so I thought that's funny because I said to myself, there's quite a few definitions in there, actually. They actually do explain some things to you at the end of certain pages. So not at all true. I've actually compiled a nice little list. So keep that in mind. Don't be deterred and don't be intimidated by the technical jargon. Most of this is really, when you boil it down, it's very simple. And, and, and the, the sustenance of it all is we're just looking at a cover-up and a massive conspiracy when all these people together are working to suppress information and we get hit by a plume, you don't want to panic people. Obviously, I understand that. 
So that's why you, you, you're out front and you have a measured response and you, you have a practical response. And it's, people don't panic until you lie to them and then all of a sudden they find out. Then people really panic. Okay, next screen capture is a beautiful one here. And remember, keep in mind, any of these grabs at the nuclear facilities here in the States, we have evidence in the FOIA documents that, and I might even have a screen capture in here tonight, that the nuclear plants, the employees and the people that work within there, they get a particular brief. They get one brief that says one set of information. And this has been clear a couple times in these documents I've seen. And then forward up the chain of command. I've been pretty clear on this. There's another set of information. And what I garner from that is the one information is a downplay. And that goes to the nuclear power plants because, you know, my God, if you have plutonium raining down over here at any kind of level, just let's play pretend, you certainly can't go to the people in the plant and say, hey, my God, we're getting hit by plutonium. You've got to get out of California. You've got to get out of California. You know, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So in their mind, you have to lie to them. You have to fudge the numbers a little bit, just like in Vietnam with the, you know, how many soldiers we actually killed and what we captured and that kind of thing. Some of those figures were stretched to make it look good. <laughs> so here we see, these are the plants now, and this is a, one of the longer lists I've seen of, of all my delving through these documents. I've seen little bits here and there that list a couple plants, two or three plants, but I thought this one was great because this is the most number I've seen in the documents yet at one time. In fact, this is like the complete compilation of plants that they admit to in the documents that had readings from Fukushima where they detected radiation. This is, if nothing else, you can look at this and say, look, here's an absolute admission that we did receive radiation from it. So for them to say that we didn't receive any, that doesn't fly. And Obama didn't necessarily say that. He just says it's not anything, the levels you don't need to worry about. You know, well, that's because which levels are we talking about? You know, did we get some real testing? Did they raise the radiation levels? Yes, they sure did. Remember that? They raised them all of a sudden. Then the RADnet monitors had problems, and they were rigged, according to an Alexander Higgins article. It looked pretty accurate to me, you know. So let's read down the list. McGuire, Oconee, Robinson, Diablo Canyon. STP, not familiar with that one, VC Summer, Songs, Jenna, Calvert Cliffs, and Nine Mile Point. <laughs> and it says isotope CCM-37. In some instances, they did test for that, but, again, usually 90% of the time it's iodine, which is the shortest half-life. I know of. Maybe there's something shorter than that, but... <clears throat> My understanding. Okay, here's a nice one where you can see the NRC is searching. And, you know, my understanding now, I'm new to a lot of this stuff, but I apparently I understand you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can set up Google or these search engines to notify you when a certain word or phrase pops up on the net. It's like what Ed Chiarini does. I know because when I post up my Fort Worth Silverant video, boom, he's in there cursing me out with a <laughs> Within five minutes. So he's probably using one of these generators that when you use a phrase or something that shows up. In this case, we're looking for NRC, any reference to NRC. They're really specific about that. Maybe they use nuclear. Maybe they use other search terms. But uh, right, this one says four new results for Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So that they want to know if you're talking about them. They really, really do. They really do. Which is very Orwellian. It's very Orwellian. And, and you know, I do good work, so I don't go searching out to see what people are saying about me. I, you know, if they're critics of me, that's great and fine. They can have their opinion. That's awesome. You know, and if it's a good criticism, I'll take it constructively. But if it's just, you know, hacking all over me, that's not going to work. I'm not interested in what those guys are saying. I have no interest at all because I know I'm doing good work. Well, the NRC is searching all over. There's been a million actually. I've got an article up to these uh, companies to search social media. And then they go in, and you can clearly see they say, we're going under blogs, and we're going under here and there, and we knock it down. I mean, I'm, this is almost word for word what they say in there. So clearly, this the Orwellian world, the implications here, yes, it's just like the alternative media. Right? We're learning that these things are highly controlled all the way around. Again, we're talking a lot of money and a lot of power, and, and this has military-type influence implications when we're talking about tritium and weapons production. Okay, next screen capture. Subject, Japan earthquake and tsunami. French claim full scale of nuclear disaster being hidden. Again, woo, they're searching the social media. They're checking online, and look what they found. Look what the French are saying, those bastards, right? 
those honest bastards. They're actually going to give us some truth, and all of a sudden, not pretty, the guy says. Yeah, it ain't pretty. It's not pretty when the truth leaks out about nuclear power. It is a nightmare. And, I, and check it out. No one's really doing anything about it. There is no, even after Fukushima, i tell you what. Okay, the next email says, a photo or two on this appears to show a lot of damage on the site. Looks bad. And the next email actually gives another, uh, or the actual, it says, Japan earthquake, tsunami, French claim scale nuclear disaster hidden. That's the Daily Mail, a link to the uh, Daily Mail. So maybe it was a, there, yeah, Mail Online, it says on the first one, it's referring to a Daily Mail article. So they don't even like that. And, and, and again, some of this slips out. I mean, look, Anderson Cooper and Grassley talk about the Pentagon child porn and DOD downloaders. So in all of these sectors, the flash of good comes up, man. Even I'm impressed and I'm amazed because some of these guys you don't get much from it. Some of these mainstream outlets occasionally, even the mainstream, let a decent article out with some little bit of truth in it that's, that's worthy. I don't promote them unless it's pretty much truth all the time, though. Okay, next frame, next screen capture. Subject, 50-mile Q&A. There's a lot of controversy over JASCO coming out and saying, look, we need a 50-mile evacuation zone. And I give credit to JASCO. My mom and the number of researchers say, hey, out of all of them, you know, him and a couple others, Chuck Castro, some of them actually tried and tried to, to do things, but they're hamstrung to a certain degree. This is a giant industry, and just like, you know, one, no one man can take the office of the president and change the world, per se, same thing in the nuclear industry. You can't expect one or two guys or whatever to, to change the whole thing because it's a huge culture now of, you know, just this bad, uh, degraded safety culture as well. But the whole industry in and of itself has changed. Uh, and, and I, again, like I say, when Upton Sinclair wrote his book, things in these industries all the way around have only gotten worse, in my opinion. I just wanted you to be aware, this is from David Liu, actually. I just wanted you to be aware of an ongoing challenge to ensure appropriate attention and priority is being applied. Many of state stakeholders are pressing us on questions regarding the 50-mile press release. Let me stop right there. What that means is owners and operators of plants in the United States, the state, that's our states, U.S. states, stakeholders, owners, operators, are pressing us on questions regarding the 50 mile press. They're saying, why 50 miles? It's always been 10 miles. Now it's 50 miles, five times as much. Oh my God, what's going on? Maybe we got to mark one over here. Maybe we want to know, maybe we're interested. Maybe people live near us like Oyster Creek. Maybe there's a giant city like New York very close by. And that's smart. That's just beautiful, man, isn't it? Wow. Captains of industry folks are doing a great job out there. So. Right here is evidence that people are worried, but they're not going to get that evidence because clearly I've got another one we'll look at where I've got this one. And uh, let me think about it. This might be the previous slide post up, but it shows that there's a, a model, plume model, that they're not going to give to the Chinese. They say we can't give it to the Chinese because if we do, then the U.S. and other stakeholders around the world, other operators of nuclear plants, will, and the states, they said, inferring the United States, the states themselves, will want to get access to it as well, and they'll know we've given it out. So see how selective that is? China ain't going to get it, and we ain't going to get that either. And they're not going to be honest about why it's 50 miles. It's this cover, the massive cover, and never ended. It's still going on now. I mean, you don't hear this on mainstream, do you? We're still getting radiation. That's a fact. It's going to get it for quite some time. So very interesting. Jasco, 50 miles. Good job, Jasco. And he's kind of showing you right there. Again, he's not perfect, but that's other evidence where a guy writes in and says, I think you might have broke this law and you might have broke this law because you didn't do this and you obfuscated and you couldn't get guys out there when you did that. And I sent people by your office and couldn't get questions answered. This was a senator, a congressman, or it was a public a committee of, oh gosh, I can't remember, but someone higher up was questioning some actions of Jack's go, whether they were legal or not. I have to dig that. I've got that post, I'm pretty sure, already up on Uncovering Plumegate. Okay, goes on to say, uh, many stakeholders are pressing us on questions regarding the 50-mile press release and implications relative to the 10-mile EPZ, uh, some for protective zone, evacuation protective zone or something like that. I believe that it is very important for us to develop a response to the question in a timely manner to maintain credibility. So we got to respond. We don't want to wait too long 
or we lose credibility, but you know, maybe they want to take a little bit of time to make sure they respond with a Q&A or some kind of press release or some kind of, you know, refer you to this website of ours or, or whatever. It's all the con information is controlled, and they're not giving it away for free. And what they do give is downplayed and really kind of bogus. If I may suggest, can we articulate a real quick, and I say that because, and as I discussed in a previous show, they did a test where you went to the evacuation 17 miles, I think it was, in Chernobyl, and they did a test there, okay? Just, and that was the level they said, look, at this level, it's really bad, and you, you don't need to be from here inside towards Cher Chernobyl, okay? And they recorded that. Then independent guys went to Fukushima and went outside of the, their evacuation zone, the, the same 17 miles. They went to that distance and they tested. It's four times as high. Plus, they were testing for not just iodine. They were testing for not just cesium, not the short-lived uh, isotopes. No, they were testing for some serious stuff, you know, other than just that, multiple other things. So keep that in mind. That's why I'm, I'm confident when I say that. I may suggest, can we articulate the protective measures team thought process and then fully vet that through the appropriate levels with the agency? Not knowing what the PMT considerations were, I can see a number of unique elements which may have driven the decision, including there's no direct correlation between the NRC 50-mile press release and the 10-mile EPZ. We're advising U.S. citizens located in a sovereign country for which we have no authority and no ability to communicate with our citizens in a systematic method. They don't have that over here either, in fact. If a meltdown is over here, i got to do this one on Comanche Point because I've got a, a Comanche point, it's called Comanche something, it's one of our new plants over here. I've got the emergency manual and everything. That's quite interesting when you look at the reality, what happens in a meltdown. Well, look, maybe it comes to the point a sheriff has to be sent out to try and get you. Because right? not everybody's on their little phone in the list all of a sudden. Your phone rings, well, having a meltdown, get out. It's not that easy. It even says the sheriff may have to be sent out some places to get people and let them know, advise people, and then get them to evacuate. Now, how long do you think it takes for it to, a plume to go from the plant over to your place? How long do you think, and are they going to yeah, be honest right away, or are they trying to downplay and get under control and hope nothing happens, and then boom? Again, it's just when you nuclear power, gosh, how do people accept this? I just, I'm, I don't understand it. I really don't. As many countries do, we provide precautionary recommendations to our citizens. Because the NRC has no authority nor infrastructure in another country, the recommendation, blah, 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 it's pretty much it on this one. just thought it was interesting. And, they, you know, they want to maintain credibility because they know their credibility is being questioned big time, big time. Okay, next screen capture. From Lee Richard to Kelly John. Subject, SLN draft analysis. John, attach two documents to supporting analysis which are undergoing peer review for revising the NUREG, that's a nuclear regulations, I think. It's some kind of manual. NUREG, for high burn-up LEU fuel and for PWR mixed oxide fuel, pressurized reactor there, mixed oxide fuel. Again, reference to mixed oxide fuel. You don't hear that a lot. You don't hear Alex Jones talking about that. Sure don't. No screen captures on InfoWars or Prison Planet from the FOIA documents either. Bomber, you know. Goes on to say, if you look at the long-term station blackout for Peach Bottom, okay, that's a plant that's up and operating here. Doesn't it sound nice? Peach Bottoms. Man, maybe get some cobbler and sit down and enjoy a nice meltdown. To a long-term station blackout for Peach Bottom, if you give some idea on duration of in-vessel, ex-vessel, late in-vessel relief, the PWR, pressurized reactor, LEU versus PWR LEU MOX gives you some comparisons. Okay, I, I included this one because, again, it's something a MOX analysis right here, and it says on this subject, if you read down in LEU slash MOXST analysis, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I really am still just an absolute layman learning as I go crash course in nuclear meltdown, but I can tell you now, MOX, the plutonium is the most dangerous substance. No demand, the MOX fuel, nobody wants it. Why? five times more lethal in the latent effects. That's what my studies led me to believe. And so here's clear indications, mox, 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 mox. Don't deny it. And don't deny you had mox sludge, and you had super high radiation levels with the bulldozers had to bulldoze. I mean, it's ridiculous. What they want you to think about the thing that it really wasn't that serious. 
It is the premier, most intense industrial accent known to man. It'll even if another one went up, it'd probably be hard to to beat this one. Really, I mean, they had six reactors there, four of them which were very heavily damaged, and number three had mock fuel in it, which we don't want over here, folks. I'm telling you, whatever it takes. If you're going to get out in the street with a sign and yell at them, I don't know if that helps or not, but I'd try anything to to keep them from bringing that over here. Okay, next screen capture from Crone Paul to a whole bunch of people. Subjects, U.S. NRC Emergency Operations Center status update. This is all, to all. Japanese update, no major changes. HOO's briefing of Commissioner Tech Assistance is now Tuesday and Thursday at 1,000. I will be listening in tomorrow and forwarding any updates. As a reminder, this information is O-U-O, and it's not to be shared outside the federal government without NRC approval, official use only. At the bottom, there's another email here. Same subject. It says, attached is the latest U.S. NRC earthquake tsunami update. Please forward the update as appropriate. The update is marked official use only, so please do not release to the public. Why can't they be honest to us about nuclear power? Why? Why can't they be open and transparent? Why is this the most secretive administration? Eight years of the most classifications, national security, things being made top secret. We just more than, I forget the number, some incredible number of documents he's classified in, under the Obama, more than Bush and anyone ever before in all history. So we're promised transparency. It's no different than the nuclear industry. They don't want to be open and transparent. They don't want you to know that Bechtel to get a 30-something million dollar bonus installed some tank in, in in time to meet their schedule, but the tank had some kind of fail, some part or some leakage or whatever, and then you have, now that you got real problems, okay, and that's stating it mildly. This is the kind of industry we're talking about. Rather than do the right things, say, hey, we just don't get it in on time, you know, we better make darn sure that thing's safe. Screw the bonus. That's not how it works. That's in a fantasy land. I'm telling you. I wish I lived in that fantasy land, but that's in the fantasy land that we're not in right now. Next screen capture. Okay, some of these I'm not sure what PMT09 Hawk is, but I know what this other Hawk is, is a FOIA kind of committee and all the documents there to get redacted. And that's not incriminating in and of itself. You know, it's for FOIA. They have to capture all these documents. And it seems they're kind of rigid about making sure they collect everything. But they do redact and Ultimately, they do have the power to black out whole pages. And in these documents, if you're kind enough to read through them, you'll see sections where it's really heating up the conversation. And yes, because I had to go tell the ambassador that, and then it'll be like a whole page redacted. You're like, oh, man. Well, if I could just have some kind of James Bond device to read through that little redaction and see what was written there, I'm sure, I'm sure it's very incriminating. Maybe it says Obama. Maybe it says mock fuel. Maybe it's realistic about what's going on. There's some heavy redaction, no doubt about it. So the ET executive team is what that stands for suggested that some information be passed on to NRC slash OPA, Office of Public Affairs. I am not sure how to frame the information, although a Q&A and incorporation in a press release were suggested. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thanks for giving us a whole bunch of non-information, right? How many hours of non-collection of information did you actually take? How many hours of non-really revealing information? Like on the other side of, the, of some of these, you see the two different answers, for the public and then for the industry, okay, and they're, they're different. They're very much different. What they tell the public is a nice, rosy, uh, uh, the least worst possible outcome, the least worst. And then, and, and even on the worst case, they're not willing to be honest right there, but they give a little bit more when they're being for the industry or for the, you know, NRC for official use only. Those little sections under the Q&A, so they're quite different. They're quite different. It's really, uh, it's very telling in this industry that you have to be like that, and you can't be upfront and honest. You know, by the way, Donna posted up on Uncovering Plumegate um, Alec Baldwin's letter on the Tooth Fairy Project, and I implore you to go there and read it. You know, there's a reason they grabbed his phone conversations and put it all over the, the uh, mainstream TV, right? I'm not justifying him screaming at his daughter or whatever. You, I don't know if you're familiar with this. But I have my feeling is that when you come out against nuclear power like that, they can do that to you quite easily and land you. That's what happened to me. That's what's happening to Pete Santilli and others on a smaller scale 
not as big as that, but that's pretty hardcore when they'll do that. And that's, that's my opinion. I can't prove that. But, again, it kind of rings true. And he's one of the few people, Alec Baldwin, to speak out and show that in the Tooth Fairy Project, the closer you get to a nuclear plant, the higher level of strontium in the children's teeth. Is it from Cold War bomb era testing, as the shills and the trolls and the nuclear apologists say? Well, I ask you, if the levels get higher closer to the plant, does that make sense that that would be from a bomb or bombs that went off and the fallout would be fairly evenly distributed? Maybe it would wash up against the mountains and collect more in some places, but generally, in most places, it, it would be a fairly a similar level across the board with slight variations, unless in particular spots, like I say, when it hits the west coast of the mountains, if it's coming from Japan, they tend to get more than on the east side of those mountains, right? And this makes sense, and this rings true. And hats off to Alec Baldwin for speaking out, man. And when people like that do that, they bring crap of attention to it, and all of a sudden housewives are, are worried because they're not getting it on the view. They're not getting it. When Alex Jones goes on the view, he didn't talk about Plumegate. He just bopped his head up and down a lot and yelled all over the place and acted kind of strange, if you ask me. Okay, next screen capture. Trump, Jackson, Donald, two whole bunch of people. Subject, March 17, CA briefing on Japan reactor accidents. The following is a synopsis of the briefing with changes or noteworthy items underlined. Status of Fukushima Daiichi units. Unit 1, no significant change. Unit 2, no significant change. Unit 3, no significant change. Noted sustained vapor plume. Observed from spent fuel pool. Roger that, March 17. Sustained vapor plume. Observed from spent fuel pool. Nothing to worry about, though. It's only the MOX fuel. It's only the plutonium mixed with uranium and nano form, and it's the most deadly. It's the five times in the latent cancers. No big deal. It just had to be California, you know and the children in the thyroid business, but no big deal. No big deal at all. Nothing to worry about. Don't even know warnings or nothing like that. This industry, to say they're irresponsible, someone should slap me across the face just for such an understatement. Just smack me across. If I ever say a nuclear power is irresponsible, smack me across the face. And my God, man, has Obama slipped an RFID chip in your latte or something? You're talking crazy talk. That's troll activity. Call me out on that. I included this one. Let's look at Unit 4 while we're here. Japanese have said that pool is not empty. We are sticking with it as being empty. Well, hey, hats off to you. In fact, Chuck Castro says he didn't believe that crap when the Japanese said they see a sparkle of water in the box. Tepco's even worse than anybody. Of course, you know, if it happened over here, trust me, they'd be every bit as bad as Tepco. And don't kid yourself or fool yourself to think it'd be any better. I'm sure there's a Chuck Castro over in Japan who tried to do something, too, right? to some degree, small, small degree, though it was. We're sticking with it being empty. Jack Grove elaborated our position. Visual H2, hydrogen explosion, damage evident. Well, there's a Chris Busby video out there. I, I hate to, I don't know if it's number three he was talking about. Maybe it was number three, where he said it might not have been a hydrogen explosion, according to him. It might have been some kind of nuclear-type explosion on some small scale. Again, I have to post that video. Very interesting. And I think Chris Buzz is one of the higher level of truth tellers when it comes to the Shima radiation business, straight up. So it says visual H, hydrogen explosion, damage evident. No vapor coming from pool. Extremely high dose debris on ground outside of Unit 4 spent fuel pool, SFP, had to be buried by bulldozer to lower dose rates. Assumed to be pieces of fuel from Unit 4 after explosion. Evidence leads to support our call of an empty pool. Okay, again, what's, there's a lot of this. is chock full of <sighs> Number one, we know by March 17 that pool's been dry and been dry. It's been dry for a number of days, and in the end it's dry for weeks and weeks. What's going on? Okay, maybe you can spray salt water on it, but when you look at that, it's, it's not doing anything. It's really not being very effective dumping the water can. It's a big deal. I mean, seriously, we're having major emanations. Again, this is what is this show? What is the indicative of? Nuclear power, when it goes wrong, boy, it goes wrong on an unprecedented level. I would rather have a wildfire raging out of control. It eventually goes out and it's just like burnt carbon smoke in the air and some homes get burnt down. This stuff is for that. plutonium's for, gosh, look it up. Do me the favor, do yourself a favor, look up plutonium, look up uranium, and look what the half-lives are. Because Mox fuel is clearly number three. I've posted high-def pictures from Pink Tentacle. 
you go online and look in, they've got a number of the drone high-def flyovers. You can clearly see the damage on three is the worst of them all. And, and to be quite frank with you, if someone were to militarily target a nuclear power plant, let's say you had six of them in one close proximity, you know, especially if you look at Japan, first of all, Aichi was a great target if you really wanted to cripple them. And number three, which was hit the worst, well, kind of convenient, the one with Mox, and kind of convenient to spend fuel pool on four, which was packed full, chock full of rods, bundles of rods. Man, I'm telling you, wow, isn't that convenient? And, and my opinion is all these nuclear plants all over the world, guess what they are when they trick, when, when Hillary Clinton's going to trick Czechoslovakia to get the nuclear power plant, or Russia, whoever, it doesn't matter, guess what? You just purchased a stationary nuclear bomb. Yeah, you sure did. You sure did. Because there's any number of ways they can they can cause one to uh, to melt down. Don't kid yourself at all. They got technology now that's incredible, and I'm convinced now they have some kind of orbital platform where they can attach and detach different types of weaponized devices. It would make sense, wouldn't it? That's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. So this clip right here is pretty indicative of well the seriousness of the situation and. Basically, we're talking about the evidence leads to support our call of an empty pool. I'll just leave it at that, number four. Empty pool, man. And over here, they, they don't necessarily have to have and probably don't have it, most of these, on the spent fuel pools. My understanding, when a station blackout happens, it's not good for the spent fuel pool because it stops circulating. Eventually, it's going to boil over, swash around. You're going to lose a lot. The top, you're going to have a cop melt, and that keeps on going long enough. They're all going to, you know, what's going to happen there? It's not going to be good. Again, I'm a layman on a lot of this, but, but the basic thrust of it all is you must understand, as we're all fairly ignorant to this, it's been kept from us. I mean, you have to go to a, you know, some kind of higher-level college to get a good degree in nuclear physics. My dad went to the University of Texas and then later taught at the University of Florida. So you'd have to go to one of those kind of schools to get a good degree in nuclear physics. It's not anyone can, can pick it up in just a few short days. It's not that easy. But again, the overall idea of it, we know the seriousness if you just look at the studies. You don't have to be a professional to read a study and comprehend it and get a, a very firm idea what happens when these uh, meltdowns occur. The best one right now is the costs and consequences of Chernobyl. I posted a link on one of my previous shows on that by the Nestorinko um, and the uh, couple and, and Yablokov. Those are the ones that did the study on Chernobyl, and they were indeed went through suppression after that. The Russians did the same thing. Cover up, cover up, cover up. When you go into the hospitals and you mess with the records, right? And over here, what's happening? Well, no one's doing a yearly compilation analysis of cancer statistics. I did a video up, and the best someone could send me, they said, here, we got it right here. I was like, really? I was thrilled. I was like, great, I get to go in and look at this, man. I'm, I'm see what thyroid you know, cancer is going on. Well, I looked at it, same old, same old. It goes from up to 2008, 2009. Yeah, they're published in 2012, but the date is not from 2012. And published in 2011, the date is not from 2011. It's compiled from 2004 to 2008, 2004 through 2009. No one right now, even after Fukushima, this is how bad it is, folks. you got to understand, this is incredible. This is unprecedented. I would suspect in the history of man that a government would just stand by and let this ongoing event and nothing's being done at all. They're not even looking at a study to see hey, what's going on medically with our population, man? What can we do to help them out? Can we get them in? Can we do They don't care. I have, you know, people say it's a depopulation. I think, tell me more. Tell me more. Because I haven't seen anyone make any move to help people at all. Not not at all. Not, not like the countries that offered rainwater warnings. And other countries said don't eat leafy vegetables. France and other, other countries farther away have the damn common courtesy. Just common courtesy. A, a human caring about another human. They say, hey, be careful, stay out of the rain. Hey, don't eat this stuff, it's bad. You know, I know it sucks for Japan and California if their food's tainted, but hey, better you, we make some other kind of adjustment and you move somewhere else or we age you and we have another food source enough to get infected and tainted and sick with it. That's insane. It's monstrous, really. It really is monstrous. I mean, I think uh, Frankenstein was nicer, if you ask me. The Wolfman might be nicer than thing, not. Okay, Lee Richard is writing Lyons Peter, Kelly John. Folks, this confirms that the temperature measurement instrument in the Unit 4 spent fuel pool is located high in the pool and would provide an indication of the air temperature if the pool level had dropped substantially. For a boiling pool, 
releasing steam at 100 degrees Celsius. The measured temperature would have been below 100 degrees Celsius due to mixing of the steam with the air in the reactor building. Prior to and following the Unit 4 building explosion, TEPCO was citing these measurements as being measurements of the pool water temperature, and thus providing evidence that the pool was filled with subcooled water. Analogous to TMI, Three Mile Island, for cases where the water level would drop below the temperature sensor, this measurement would give a misleading impression that subcooled water is present in the fuel, just as at Three Mile Island, rising level indication in the reactor pressurizer and a lack of any direct wide range level measurement in the reactor itself was misinterpreted as being due to excessive injection of coolant by the ECCS system, which was then shut off and accelerated letdown of coolant initiated. So it sounds like that it had a false reading and then something kicked in and that was not good. In addition to adding wide range level instrumentation, if one wants to have a direct measurement of pool subcooling, as with the reactor subcooling margin monitors that were added to USPWR's pressurized water reactor after Three Mile Island. See, after Three Mile Island, apparently they went in and, and added some, they had to make an adjustment. Again, we're learning as we go, they say. We're going to learn from Fukushima. The next meltdown won't be nearly as bad, and the one after that will be even less, and the one after that even, even less, and the one after that even less. So by the time we get to the 50th meltdown, Folks, I think it'll just be so small that some guy with a dustpan and broom will come along, just sweep it up and be gone on down the road. Chuck will pick him up. He'll deposit the dump like the Toxic Avenger. Jim Lee, the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> right? Wow. What I wanted you to see on this one is they're, they're talking about this temperature measurement. And so they're saying that, that the J Japanese are saying it's not as bad as, as, as NRC thinks that it's because the sensor positioning of the sensor might be giving a false reading. And, and indicative of the fact that the pool, is, the water's drained, and they're trying to say it's you know a lot better than it really is. Believe me, because no one over there in Japan think about it in Japan now. Now we're talking now about the plume effect over here. It's bad. 1.3 million by the year 2030. Okay, 22,000 in the first 14 weeks, according to the Sherman Mangano study. And the Bobby one very accurate again as far as numbers and going in. And the shills and the trolls will say, well, they're calling from CDC and they're. This doesn't mean this, and this doesn't mean that. Hey, I'm all I'm telling you is this. The Bird study, Chernobyl study, now Fukushima study. You guys can keep believing them if you want, but how many more studies you want to go through? How many more people's got to die before you run? Their study's all bunk. Their study's all bunk. Entirely paid to be bunk. Some people will sell out for cash. Fact. Not even going to name names on that. Next screen capture. Protective measure team, one pager of current status. March 19th. This will be the current status for March 19th. Radiological information of areas around Fukushima 1. The protective measure team has received information from several various sources regarding radiological conditions around the reactors. Some information from March 17 around the plant indicate dose rates between 36 millirems per hour and 65 millirems per hour at approximately one half mile from the site over land. March 16 information, record, again, over land, interesting, because over the ocean, guess what happened? A lot of stuff around the ocean. Were we going to test for it? Not by what I read. The guy, I'm pretty sure he's in the Department of Energy, he was worried about, I think he's the head of the department, Chu or Chi or Chu or something like that, or Cho or something. He was worried about the money aspects. The other lady in the screen capture uh, was, uh, was worried about the political ramifications. I went over this in a BTR broadcast I did previously. So one says, hey, that's politically sensitive. You sure you want to test the water and see how much radiation's in it? The DOE guy says, I'm just worried about how much it's going to cost. You know, call that, you know, crazy. You know, but I think it is crazy. March 16 information recorded on site indicated approximately 30 rims an hour near the reactor buildings and an unconfirmed dose rate of 375 rims an hour, approximately 300 feet above the Unit 3 reactor during a helicopter flyover. In fact, it's so hot that choppers couldn't, I mean, if they had tried to go down close, wow, man, I hate to even think what they'd have got blasted with. AMS flyover data on March 18 generally agrees with MESA, M-E-S-A, supplied field monitoring team data out to approximately 30 kilometer, 18 miles. And that's 18 miles, see, that's just like at about Chernobyl distance, too, thinking about it. 18 miles west of the site. Data shows that ground-level dose rates from deposition are highest in the northwest quadrant with 20 to 40 millirems per hour readings recorded by AMS. I think that's the 
American Meteorological, so they had flyovers at Scubby, who that is, and 18 MR milligrams per hour field team readings between 20 kilometer and 30 kilometer in a quadrant. So, so that may sound kind of technical, but it's not really. Let me read the second part here, too. There are yet to be, okay, radiological conditions in the United States. There are yet to be confirmed information that an air sample taken at a U.S. nuclear power plant in California, San Onofre, measured iodine, again, iodine, at 2.0 times 10 and negative 13 UCI per milliliter. This appears to be a near background level. Wow, I haven't seen that number before. So that's an incredibly low. This appears to be near background level of this almost just barely detectable. Nothing to worry about again. Nothing to, but again, iodine. Eight days, if it takes that long to travel over, it's cut in half, cut in half. We're worried about the other stuff that came over. It's not just iodine. Folks, we've got to keep that in mind. This appears to be near background level detection, and that's what they told all their employees in the plant with the briefs in the nuclear plants over here, and has not been confirmed, it says. Questions to the site regarding detailed information asked by the staff to the San Onofre shift supervisor at the 4 a.m. plant phone call determined that this level is below the lower limit of detection, LLD, which means not detectable. Hypothetical atmospheric modeling being performed by NERAC for DTR, it must be DITRA, is being revalidated and corrected to determine worst case and realistic predictions given certain source term generating scenarios. So they're going to stay off that super low grab they've got. We're going to remodel and take that and put it back into it. That's all bogus again, so it's even downplayed even more. It's not being realistic. Why did the Japanese independent guys go to the Chernobyl evacuation limit at 18 miles and do a sample there, not just for one, but for multiple different radioactive substances, and then had a more uh, accurate analysis that they were able to say, look, you should, this isn't good. We need, we're not being accurate on some of these things compared to what they did at Chernobyl. Just not adding up here. Next screen capture. What is PMT doing? Protective measures team one. Continue to continue to work with the Department of Energy, NIT, and NERAC to refine estimated radi radiological effects on the United States. Again, there's some and key information there. We want to we want to prove they're talking about a plume a lot. We want to prove they're talking about it's going to hit the West Coast. We're going to prove they know that, that it's going to affect America. We can't believe what they say the levels are. We know they're downplaying that. They know their people are watching these FOIA doctrines. So to be sure, you're going to have to have some people in the field downplay. As I one clip I've got of this doctor I got off the e, &E News, um, he says that there's some government estimates that downplay uh, the fatalities or whatever, like, yeah, exactly. They downplay everything. They have a, a nice little tricky way. You know, as you move a decimal point, it makes a big difference. Think about that. Updating on-site and near-site radiological conditions as we get information. Requesting information from Diablo Canyon as well as Sanofre, Sanofre to monitor and promptly alert the NRC if radiological changes are detected at their site. They want to know who knows what when they know it. Again, that's how you pounce on information and have a blackout. If you think back to June of uh, 2011 when they were harping up and chemtrailing above Fort Cooper and Calhoun, we had the uh, floods and the dams were at, uh, full. Again, we're worried that someone's doing this with weaponized weather. And, and if you look at that, there's a total blackout. You couldn't find anything about Fort Calhoun or Fort Cooper. I found something on a French website, but then it disappeared. I got some screen captures, and that's where I've got the, they had a picture of the, uh, the what was it, France and Germany, wherever it was, a couple places, the rainwater warnings. You could actually see their ad advertisement for that. And you couldn't read their language, but you could see the radiation signs falling down in the rainwater, the family under the umbrella. And that was really Amazing when I saw that. I was like, wow, other countries, other countries aren't like us. You know, we are one of the worst countries now. I know they say America is awesome, but then how come other countries got further away from Fukushima got rainwater warnings? Good question. Contacting EPA to follow up on their monitoring efforts and results along the western U.S. coast. Again, EPA heavily involved. And in again, I've told you this is a multiple agency cover up. Again, the largest provable conspiracy and cover-up in the United States history. Make no mistake about it, because looking at the number of agencies involved and, and considering that those agencies are tasked with our well-being, with keeping us safe and informing us of danger, that to me is incredible. You know what? It totally, if I had any false illusions about America at that point, you know, they, they were shattered. It took me a week. Again, it's like waking up. You hit this bubble, 
takes you a week to come to terms with. I was writing the articles, and you know my story from there. But the point being, this is a huge cover-up. They're all EPA. Gosh, you might as well just disband all these things and have nothing. Chaos would probably be better. Actually, if you just randomly drew for the American public like you do when we go in for jury trial, and we just got some people that maybe not had the most experience, right, in other words, connections, but they were honest people, we do much better. But who cares about the speed of business at this point? We just need to conduct a morally acceptable business, number one, responsible business and constitutional business and stick to some kind of code or something. We better have some kind of plan. Right now it seems like whoever's in control, it's the plan's not one we want. And so I sure don't want it. Next screen capture. And that's a mention of talking points, what I have here. Subject, 0700 talking points update. Please find attached a 0700 NRC talking points. This update corrects the statement in the 0600 talking points. Again, talking points, talking points. Plenty of those and plenty of press releases where they control the questions, they control the answers. Here's the next screen capture. That's what it's about. I'm looking for the right folks to pull together background information, slides, key messages, talking points, and possible Q&A for the commission briefing on the Japan event. The briefing is likely to happen Monday. Looks like a busy weekend. I will attend the executive team stand up tomorrow to discuss. Please let me know who will support the areas where NRR has a lead and where specific support is needed are as follows. Another mention of talking points and possible Q&A. Great. We're just not going to get the information. It's selective in, in information distribution is the phrase that comes to mind. I'm going to finish up in a minute because I'm going to go one hour tonight. Guys, I'm going to come back tomorrow night and do another hour. I've got like 50 screen captures here on this one, so this is going to take a while. This is a long document. Some of them are hundreds of pages long. Some of it's duplicated. I get to the point on these documents where I begin to recognize forms and format, and I just hold the button down, and it gets up to speed, and it's scrolling through to high rate of speed. I just begin to look for geometrical configurations when I notice changes and it looks like emails and ports out stop. So I've got a system, I'm a great speed reader too, so I can go through the high rate of speed and quickly pick out what's, what I think is important because there's so much to cover and so much ground and such a lack of plume gate researchers right now, such a lack of them, and such a huge amount of stuff. And you don't have to be an expert. Some of it any layman can figure out. Some of it is so damaging, you could write an article off one screen capture and post it up on your blog. That would be a great help. It would be a great help. Okay, next screen capture from Jackson Donald to a whole bunch of folks. Uh, subject, March 18, briefing, CA briefing on Japan reactor accidents. But for California, I'm not sure what they mean on CA there. On Unit 3, no significant change. Reports of better success using water cannons to get water near or in spent fuel pool. Again, indicative spent fuel pool. Uh, on the number three, major problems there, Matt, major problems. Next screen capture, Unit 4, no significant change. Other issues, 5 and Unit 6 both have AC, alternating current power. Unit 5 and 6 spent a fuel pool being positively cooled. Hey, it could have been worse. Maybe 5 and 6 could have gone down too. Maybe we should count our blessings. It could have been worse. Very short phone call with very little information provided. Winds are still blowing to the east and at the sea. White House tasking determine the worst case scenario and associated plume and dose consequences. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. White House tasking determine the worst case scenario and associated plume and dose consequences. That's what the White House has tasked. That's out of that. Task to determine the worst case scenario and associated plume and dose consequences. The White House. Obama's White House. Obama's administration. You know, I'm going to take off here in just a second. Let me finish up again. The reason Obama got reelected, not to harp on him, Romney's not much better, says nuclear energy is clean energy, obviously in total denial or totally bought and paid for. But Obama slicked by this time because this happened on his watch, and the alternative media, the mainstream alternative, didn't cover it. In fact, hardly anybody covered it. And when they did, it's just like it's so disorganized and didn't make any sense the way people approached it at all. I got with another researcher who kind of gave me some ideas and helped me along, and then worked out a system now where, as you can see on these screen captures, I'm following what Shazam had me do, 
and you go in and capture the very top of the page on the left with the ML number so you can refine the document anytime or anyone can go back to that document if they want to refer to it. I can just send that. I wasn't doing that before. I was trying to write in the description all this. I mean, I know it's common sense and you think it would click, but people are so busy and have such a volume of information, calls ringing off the hook, you know, crazy stuff going on in the alternative media. You'd be surprised how many bleeding obvious things you would you would miss. Like I had to call one to the junkyard, the, uh, what was the name of them? Hollander, I think, was the name of the system. And you could call the 800 number when the, I couldn't get the computer to come on. And I checked all around, went to all my stuff, called the number. The guy says, look, I need your first thing to make sure it's plugged in. I was like, I know it's plugged in. I just I looked down and it wasn't plugged in. I was like, oh, man. He says, don't worry. It happens all the time. Thanks. I was like, wow. So you would think it's obvious, some of this stuff, but it's not. But now i got a system. And it's easy for people to come in and do this as well. This is Blockbuster. You could write an article right here and say White House Tasking. Determine you, that could be the title of the article. Just post that in it. Seriously, I mean, we knew they knew about it. You can go back and check the date on the article when this went up. But in most, it's like on the 19th or whatever, so the weeks gone by, the 20th. Even beyond that, the White House is still asking for modeling, controlling information. Say, no, we can't give it to China. Because we're waiting for White House to okay this plume model and release it. I mean, that's how bad it was. The White House, what the hell did they have to do with it per se? Wouldn't TEPCO release something or the NRC release something or you know, this is why does it have to go to the White House? Does this have to do with the nuclear? And what do they have to know about this? What do they know about meltdowns up there at the White House? They must not know much because they want to build nuclear plants all over the place and license more and put a couple here in Florida, thanks to. Uh, NERS, they just got some shut down, one shut down recently. They didn't build it. They denied the permit. Probably the first time in a long time those guys had anything denied. Such arrogance, too. They expect every time. Their lawyers are incredible. they got billions invested already in Levy County, billions, to try to get that place put in there. That's my understanding. A lot of money is put into these things, incredible amounts of money, incredible. That tell makes a lot of money. They don't have to do their work right. It's just got to get past the inspectors. Inspectors can be greased. Inspectors can be incompetent. You can be shorthanded. You can have a, a frigid safety culture. You report a problem, it doesn't go well. You cost us money, you cost us problems. I know it's insane, and you would think, well, it's nuclear. You can't do that. Well, I rest my case when you really research this stuff. It's insane. It's truly insane. Okay, that's number 40, status 18th, White House plume. I'm going to leave it on there tonight because I'm, I want to actually relax a little bit tonight. I may actually crank up the PlayStation and play a video game tonight to do my best to forget about some of our problems for a momentary reality escape. I think I've earned it this week. Okay, so join me again tomorrow. I promise we're going to finish up these uh, selection of screen captures. You can go and do them yourself. All of them are pretty interesting. The last one I put in there because it's a mention of back during Hurricane Andrew how uh, the turkey power plants withstood Hurricane Andrew's effects pretty well. And I thought it was interesting they were describing how it hit the plants and everything. And, and I, my contention is Fort Calhoun and Fort Cooper were struck by weaponized weather. Who's controlling it? I can't tell you that for sure. I just found evidence of that. And again, Isaac and Sandy and other researchers did as well. So in that last uh, screen capture I have on here, and I read that, I thought to myself, interesting, how all these hurricanes and crazy weather systems seem to find their way to nuclear power plants. And even if they're natural, you say, look, they're not engineering them, you're crazy, fine. These natural systems are threatening us. Either way, it's a lose-lose situation, right? So please consider that, and please join me tomorrow night as we'll continue with the Freedom of Information documents pertaining to Fukushima and, indeed, the world's largest cover-up to date. So, Patrick Henry, over and out.